take you through the overview now of max stripe transaction. This is honest. Honest would mean that the issuer and the acquirer is one and the same. We have a customer called Jack. Jack has a card issued to him by a standard bank. Jack can have four devices. These two are card present devices, ATM and the POS machine. The remaining two, e-commerce website and the mail order telephone order are card not present transaction. Jack swipes the card on any of these four devices. The devices will generate a message. They'll send this message onto the switch of that particular bank. At the switch, we'll do that authentication of the card holder. Is this our customer? We'll do the authentication of the card. We do that by using a mechanism called host security module. Somebody may use the word hardware security module, HSM. We will discuss the HSM again in detail and the key management in detail at a later point of time. The HSM helps us in identifying whether the card and the card loader are genuine. Once this is authenticated, then we need to answer the third question, does this party have adequate balance? Assuming this to be either a debit or a credit card, because we said prepaid cards will be hosted on the switch itself. At the switch, we will have the information about the card holder. Assuming this to be a debit or a credit card, we'll have a back office. At the back office, we ask this question, does this card holder have adequate balance in his account? If the answer is yes, the back office gives the feedback to the switch. The switch will issue an authorization to the terminal like the ATM or the POS machine. And then at the ATM, the cash is generated and dispensed to the customer. This is how the transaction would work. So we have done the process of authenticating the card and the card holder. Then we have done the process of doing the accounting at the back office before we issued the authorization. And after we did the accounting, debited the card holder, we issued the instruction of authorizing the transaction. And based on that, the dispensation of cash at the back office happened. This is the basic process of how honest transaction happens. In this process, the message started from the device, went all the way to the switch, and then back from the switch to the device. This is the way the communication happened. Any questions on this basic process of a max right? Can you please reiterate the difference between uh, switch and back office regarding the information they hold? Okay. The switch is holding information of which are all the cards which are issued by my bank, my issuing bank. At the back office, you will have maybe your saving account. Let us take that example. Suppose you have a saving account. Your saving account can be operated by different other mechanisms. You could use internet banking. You could use a check. You could simply walk into the branch and do a transaction. And the fourth mechanism could be use a debit card. Now, when you have this account at the back office, I'll need to link this card to the particular account, which then tells the switch that if an account has to be debited, this particular account in the back office is to be debited or credited for a transaction of that particular card. So in this case, your complete transaction data will be available in the back office. The switch will only act as a channel asking the back office whether we can pay or we are not in a position to pay. Make sense? Had this been a prepared card, then I would have the pool level data only at the back office. I'll have individual data at the switch. This is what we discussed in the morning today. Are we clear here? So switch will never hold data. It will always <coughs> ask. Switch will hold the master data of the cards, not the transaction data of the cards. We are able to compare, right? Yes. The next type is offers transaction. Now, we said a little while ago that Jack is a customer of Standard Bank, but now he is going to use a device of Alpha Bank. He goes to an ATM of Alpha Bank, swipes the card. When the card is acquired by the ATM, it sends the message to the switch of Alpha Bank. At the switch of Alpha Bank, we understand that this card does not belong to us. How did we identify that? We identified it by the concept introduced by Shilpa here about the bin or the issuer identification number. And then when we look at the issuer identification number, we know whether it belongs to us or it belongs to somebody else. Now, when it belongs to somebody else, we will need to understand which is the network which we need to use. So based on the prefix we will have to the card number, maybe four could be a Visa card, five could be a MasterCard, I will identify the network to be used. So we identify the network and forward that information to that particular network like a Visa or a Master or the China Union Pay or your Rupee. They will now understand to which entity, which issuer does this issuer identification number belong to. 
So we look at the issuer identification number and we understand that this card belongs to Standard Bank. We send that message, forward that message onwards to Standard Bank. Standard Bank would now do the same process which it did a little while ago when they did the honest transaction. They authenticate Jack and his card. They look at what is the balance available in the card. Once all the validations are completed and we want to approve the transaction or deny whatever is the, re uh, the result, we communicate that result to the network. The network communicates that result back to the acquiring bank, Alpha in this case. Alpha, if the transaction is approved, will do the accounting. They will now say that my ATM is dispensing $500. I need to collect this $500 from the issuing bank, Standard Bank. Once this accounting is done, we give that information to the ATM. ATM is now dispensing $500 of cash. This is how the transaction is completed so far as Jack is concerned. He has got $500 of cash. He has got his account at the bank has been debited by $500. Now there is one small part pending in this process is now standard owes an amount of $500 to Alpha Bank. This is what we called earlier as the clearing process. Based on these messages exchanged, Visa or MasterCard will compute the amount payable by one bank to the other bank. This is what we call as clearing and calculating the obligations in the netted way. Once the obligation calculation is done, then the bank having a payable position will need to fund their account at the settlement bank. So this bank which you see now on the screen is the settlement bank at which both Alpha and Standard will have their accounts. Once the settlement bank, the amount is funded by the bank having a payable position, we move the money from one bank to the other bank. So at that settlement institution, we debit Standard Bank's account and credit Alpha Bank's account. In this way, the last step of settlement is completed by the clearing system. These are the three elements, then messages, then clearing through Visa MasterCard, settlement at the settlement institution. This is the basic concept of how the office transactions in a max type way would work.